Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have various weather warnings issued for northern parts of the British Isles as we do have some very heavy rain and potentially some heavy snow for some as well. We've got an amber warning issued for rain for southern parts of Scotland and widespread yellow snow, ice and rain warnings. We did think initially earlier this week that wind would have been the biggest issue from this but it has developed more into a rain problem this upcoming low pressure system moving in tomorrow there will be gusty winds as well uh, and those will be more widespread but those are not the main issue rain is going to be the biggest issue with many areas seeing tens of millimeters of rain so we'll run through the weather warnings and we'll have a look at the ukv look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is raining fairly up and down in terms of temperature and very unsettled in general with a lot of batches of heavy precipitation moving in from the west there will be driest periods but a lot of the time there will be quite a high risk of either frontal rainfall or heavy thundery showers pushing in behind we we'll then have a look at the GFS, GM, ESIM, WF and the ensemble to see what's going to be happening as we head into 2023. The headline at the moment really is flat westerly conditions and all of the models today around day 10 as we head towards sort of the 5th to 10th of January look really unsettled with a very strong west to north westerly flow. That sort of pattern would probably be pretty cool actually, uh, not amazingly cold but cool, uh, not a south westerly but it would be very very unsettled very strong winds pretty much consistently gusty winds and a lot of heavy showers around pretty much all the time really if we did see this sort of pattern uh, so we'll have a look at those models towards the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well the links in description so to start on the live radar you can see at the moment we've got a lot of heavy showers around we're unfortunately having to use the future radar here for just sort of five minutes ahead of when i'm recording this because the live radar uh, some of the radars from the weather channel not working uh, across Scotland and parts of central England so some of these showers here not uh, appearing on the live radar but this is pretty accurate and you can see we've got a lot of heavy rain across parts of western Scotland at the moment with snow over the higher ground that's going to be really the theme heavy snow over the higher ground lower lying areas maybe snow for a time but mostly rain or sleet or a wintry mix where none of that a wintry accumulation uh, will really accumulate at all but elsewhere, a lot of heavy showers in, but it's probably the driest day of the week for many um, in terms of actually being a bit of brightness out there um, and some actually drier spells. So if you have got any plans this evening, probably today is probably quite a good day to do it before the big deluges arrive tomorrow. Now, if we look on the temperatures, as of around 1pm as I'm recording this, you can see it's quite cold across Scotland, and that's why there is the risk of snow, especially over higher ground, as we're just hanging on to those cold air masses that were enveloping the whole of the UK back earlier in December, but now exclusively sort of sitting over Scandinavia towards Iceland and Greenland, with that very cold air flirting with Scotland, as it will do over the coming days. Elsewhere, it's relatively mild, nothing exceptional, but around that sort of 8 to 12 degree mark, cooler the further north you head, milder the further southwards and eastwards you do head. So yeah, not too bad out there, but again, not especially pleasant either. Now if you do head over and have a look at the weather warnings, you can see there is a mass of weather warnings issued all for tomorrow across Scotland. Now we have a rain warning across Northern Ireland from midnight tonight until 10am tomorrow. Again... 30 to 40 millimetres, perhaps over higher ground, 15 to 25 millimetres widely, and could be strong, strong wind gusts, high likelihood, lower end of the impact. We do have high uh, rainfall totals for many parts of southern Scotland here. You can see this yellow warning across southern Scotland, maybe 20 to 30 millimetres widely, perhaps 50 to 70 millimetres in higher areas. And then again, an amber warning issued from 3 a.m. tomorrow until midday tomorrow. 40 to 50 millimetres widely, perhaps 60 to 70 millimetres. Um, and following the recent wet weather, river and surface water flooding is quite likely. The wearing will clear towards the end of the morning. Then we do have a snow and ice warning for issued for many central and northern parts of Scotland from tomorrow, uh, well, tonight at midnight until 9 pm tomorrow. Perhaps 5 to 10 centimetres widely above 200 metres, so higher ground, but nothing hugely uh, elevated for many parts of Scotland, but as much as 20 centimetres over 400 metres. It will be very much a transient snow event for many. You can see here to the southeast of Inverness and Fort William, the snow will turn to rain uh, during Friday morning. 
And I do think it will be very marginal. Some areas will be forecasted snow and we'll see rain. Other areas will be forecasted rain and we'll see snow. Some will see snow turning to rain. So I do think the highest risk, of course, will be over the highest ground, three, four hundred metres. But as stated here, areas as low as 200 metres could see five to ten centimetres. And again, very much uh, a very much a marginal snow event, simply because that milder air is, is a few miles further northwards, sort of 50 miles further northwards. Many areas will see more rain uh, and vice versa if that cold front uh, is further southwards as well. So we'll have to see exactly how it does develop. But uh, at this stage, there could be a risk of quite heavy snow in the north. Now, if you go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, you can see all the heavy precipitation moving in from the west at the moment, just in terms of heavier showers at the moment, and a bit of wintriness over the Scottish hills. After that, we do see a brief dry, dry spell this evening, so that's why I said this evening it's not too bad if you want to get out and do anything, um, but that heavier rain will be pushing in from around 9pm for Republic of Ireland and midnight for, for quite widespread western areas. You can see heavy snow initially over the higher ground for many parts of Scotland and very heavy rain across southern Scotland. You can see the cold front there across parts of Republic of Ireland producing, a, uh, producing line convection there. So very heavy, squally rain for about 15 to 20 minute, minutes. It could be very disruptive. So you don't really want to be caught out in that. So you've got to keep an eye on the radar as that progresses eastwards. But very heavy snow across northern Scotland, turning more to rain across southern Scotland, but could remain snow for most parts of northern Scotland. And eventually all that heavier rain moves through tomorrow morning. And by the afternoon, for many central and western areas, it could be a little bit better before the rain actually all completely clears for around 2 p.m. and could linger for parts of Scotland. Um, as a bit of snow there through Friday afternoon. As we head into Saturday, more heavy rain moves through in the morning. Uh, and again, lots of squally bands and precipitation. And through Saturday afternoon, very heavy rain in the south and southeast. A bit of a squall line there, developing once again. Another cold front elsewhere, a little bit dry, but still the risk of showers quite widely. And as we head into the 1st of January, as we head into 2023, a day that's not too bad, but there will be a risk of showers at times, little systems moving through. But by 3 p.m., it's actually quite a dry picture heading up here. But there will be more showers pushing in, uh, of course, at times. And as we head into the 2nd of January, we could see more rain pushing in from the west as weather front starts to arrive. And you can see again another low pressure system moving through for the 3rd of January there. But it does look like there could be a brief dry spell there, a brief ridge of higher pressure. Um, but there could still be showers around. And it's still sort of three, four days away. So things can change. But at this stage, it's looking pretty pleasant indeed. So at this stage, it's not looking too bad indeed for perhaps Monday uh, or Sunday and Monday for some areas. But there will, as I said, still be risks about. If you look at the uh, wind gusts just briefly, you'll be able to see that there are some stronger wind gusts coming up. So even today, there are some 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts. And tomorrow, maybe 60 or 70 miles per hour. I'm surprised it's not a yellow wind warning issued here. Again, even just the coastal areas, there could be some disruptive winds accompanied by that rain and potentially snow over higher ground. You could see some really quite horrible conditions in places. Um, and as that spreads through on Friday, the main issue is in the morning before the afternoon. It does die down a little bit, but still 40, 50 mile per hour gusts into Saturday. Still strong gusts around as well before it does die out a little bit into Monday and Tuesday as we see that brief ridge of high pressure build in before we do see more rain uh, and stronger winds approach on Tuesday. If you put on those max temperatures, you can see how it is milder in the uh, colder in the north and slightly milder in the south today. Uh, sort of seven, eight, nine degrees in the south. Um, maybe some areas peaking around ten or eleven in the far south or southwest and southeast. But in, across Scotland, it's quite cold indeed. And overnight tonight, those temperatures won't really rise much in Scotland. And by tomorrow morning, widely around freezing across northern Scotland, but much milder in the south. It's that weather front does track up milder air. And by the afternoon, it could be 12 or 13 degrees. So quite a mild day there for the 30th of December. And as we head into the last day of 2022, a big north-south split. Still quite cold across Scotland, but actually really quite mild across the southeast, 10 to 12 degrees there. As we head into the first day of 2023, very cold in northern areas. That cold air mass does spread in, and for many areas waking up on the 1st of January, it could be quite a harsh frost through many parts of northern England, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and Scotland. Temperatures perhaps as low as sort of minus 5 degrees widely, and maybe minus 10 or lower in some colder spots in Scotland. And for the afternoon of the first day of 2023, it's generally an average day for many out around sort of 7 to 10 degrees, but a lot colder across Scotland where that 
cold or air mass is lingering. As we head into the second, it's going to be quite a cold morning to wake up. Many areas, especially from sort of the Midlands and northwards, will wake up to a frost. But by the afternoon, um, most areas will get towards that sort of 5 to 7 degree range. Northern Ireland, Scotland could actually linger only around freezing. So quite cold there, even though it's only really a transient cold air mass. Just shows you this time of year, you get that minus 5 or lower air mass in. It can stay quite cold as we are sort of in that peak time now for colder weather. And as we head finally into the third, you can see a widespread frost as that cold air does envelop everywhere. You can see the upper air temperatures are not ridiculously cold, but as I said, we're sort of the coldest time of the year. So it means any time any cold air mass gets through, the potential for those temperatures to really plummet does come in. And that's why, in the longer term, yes, it's not looking ridiculously cold, but there is a risk of some wintry hazards, especially in the north, with those cooler air masses, as we'll now see on the GFS. So we do run through, you can see a westerly flow at the moment, staying generally very unsettled. And you can see uh, a lot of low pressure distance bumping in. Could see a brief ridge of high pressure early next week, and that's why, as I said, it's turning briefly drier, but low pressure does look likely to return, especially for northern areas, as we head into the first full week of January. And you can see a huge low pressure system moving in around day 10 massive system again we've got to keep an eye if any little lows develop along this low could be really quite severe but even this big sort of mother low could be uh could become uh, a named storm potentially uh, and we could see a lot of weather warnings issued for this very strong west and northwesterly wind and it would be pulling quite a cold air mass as well you can generally see eventually as it clears briefly colder with a north to northwesterly wind but then remaining fairly westerly so it could be cooler in the longer term with a lot of these strong north uh, westerly flows but i'm not expecting anything blocked and cold this is very much a polar maritime air mass pushing in and if we do run it back and have a look at that air mass in more detail you can see the minus five line does get through it is going to be cold uh, many areas probably be down to the mid to low single digits could be snow across scotland and could be snow elsewhere but nothing significant uh with this before eventually milder air pulls pulls in now if you look at the gm see how that does compare again a westerly flow at the moment staying generally quite unsettled and then eventually in the longer term look at that big low pressure running in a northwesterly flow at day 10 and again cooler air pushing in especially for northern areas but could drift southwards as well very unsettled and could be quite a stormy pattern continuing there we're still waiting to see the impacts of the sudden of the stratospheric warming we still forecasted to see and of course the ao trending more negative as we saw yesterday and the nao trending slightly more negative as well and of course the mjo going into phase six slash seven which could promote more atlantic ridging now if we do go over to have a look at the ecmwf um Again, a westerly flow continuing over the course of the next few days. Brief ridge of high pressure early next week for the westerlies to return. And as I said, at day 10, look at this huge low pressure system that, again, could become names. Um, big, big low, producing very strong northwesterly winds. Um, again, quite a cold air mass moving in as well. But again, nothing ridiculously cold. We generally give temperatures average to below average, um, but would be incredibly unsettled and incredibly windy with this again you put on the wind field there very strong west northwesterly winds in the north atlantic you can see how strong that flow is and again that could be quite disrupted there'll be very heavy showers squally showers maybe even wintry showers with this now if you finish but just have a look at the ensemble members you can see it has shifted cold in the longer term but again that is down to that polar maritime air mass not to do with any blocking or any proper cold generally average to above average over the next week and then as we head towards that day 10 period trending more towards average with slightly colder air masses pushing in at times but sort of oscillating up and down between the colder and milder weather but of course if we saw that polar maritime it would be cold so as i said peak time of the year for colder weather um but again, I'm not expecting anything too crazy. Again, the sort of two meter temperatures would generally be sort of around that sort of five to ten degrees in terms of high temperatures, and that will be oscillating up and down. And the reason why you can see why it is just a polar maritime air mass because those dew points are particularly low. You can see in the longer term, some are trending towards a few degrees below freezing, but nothing ridiculously cold. Uh, and of course, those will probably be some Scandinavian high patterns that are still appearing, but not really too prominent. 
Again, if you have a look at the ECMWF on some members, they have trended slightly cooler in the longer term, but nothing significant, not as quite as significant as the GFS, and generally still above average and looking quite unsettled. Um, and yeah, not particularly cold or seasonable at all, looking quite unsettled and stormy, in fact, in the longer term. So the general pattern is still there for a quite strong westerly flow, very unsettled, and we'll probably see more um, systems like we're going to see tomorrow with widespread rain uh, and snow warnings issued, perhaps more wind warnings issued as well. And I'm expecting perhaps as we head through the middle of January, things to turn to more of a drier, colder pattern. As I said, NAO does look, look likely to trend more towards neutral, if not negative. The AO is going to go negative again, and the MJO may force that NAO negative uh, and general more ridging. So we'll have to see what happens. And again, if you want to have a look at what, what, what about that, do watch yesterday's video where we concentrated that uh, on that sort of longer term pattern a lot more. And of course, we've got, still got that stratospheric warming to keep an eye on, which could be coming toward the middle of the month as well. So things. Not looking encouraging for cold weather at the start of January, but things could develop more interesting, and it could be a month of two halves, just how December has been a month of two halves. Very cold for the first two weeks, and pretty westerly, and generally average to above average for the last two weeks. But we'll have to see how it does play out. But for the time being, it's quite unsettled, quite stormy, and could be quite disruptive out there, with stronger winds, rain, and snow in Scotland. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.